This issue is focused on Judas Iscariot by Leonid Andreev, which was recommended to me by Tanya as one of her favourite books. The version I've read is Walter Morrison's English translation, published in 1947 by John Westhouse. Tracking down a copy of this may require looking at the second-hand market. Alternatively, there is more than one version available online for free. My copy also features illustrations by Brian Robb, which I presume are specific to the Westhouse version. It's worth mentioning that Robb's illustrations are low quality, very dark, even more so for being poorly reproduced here, and add nothing to the reading experience. The plot is basically the retelling of Jesus' last few days as seen through the eyes of Judas. Now, if you're watching this video on Pluto and are unfamiliar with the story of Jesus and his betrayal by Judas, this review may contain spoilers, and that was probably the biggest one. The book is short, 100 pages or so in this edition, somewhat short even for a novella, but it still does a pretty good job of getting inside the mind of Judas. It's that familiarity with the thought processes of history's greatest villain that makes this something special. As I mentioned in the third video, this series already has its running cliché of the main character considering themselves to be ugly, despite all evidence and opinion pointing to the contrary, and Andreev's text also devotes considerable space to the physical attraction, or not, of its lead. But that's because Judas is presented as a twisted grotesque, his head seemingly split into four sections, as if by a double sword blow and then stuck together again. His face is split into two, one side cunning and alive, the other smooth and still. Both sides provoke revulsion and distrust at various points in the tale, but they also represent the two sides of Judas's twisted character, which, like his face, cannot help but unsettle or disturb just about everybody that crosses his path, even seemingly Jesus, who, as we know, was kind of famous for his even temper, among other things. What Andrew does, which probably back in 1900 or so would have been considered a blasphemy, is present the tortured nature of Judas's soul. Even when he does something that might be considered good, it seems he did it for the wrong reasons, or at least he claims to have. His behaviour makes him unpopular with the other disciples. He pits Paul and John against each other, and seems largely the cause of poor Thomas's doubts. But Judas has doubts himself. In part, his actions seem the result of trying to convince himself that he does not believe that Jesus is truly divine, and at other times to convince himself that he does. That, of course, culminates in his betrayal, selling out Jesus for the famous 30 pieces of silver. But Judas watches that unfold with the desperation. He's desperate for people to see Jesus for who he is, desperate for the proof of who he is. But, spoiler alert, Jesus gets crucified. The betrayal of Judas through those final scenes is quite powerful and moving. He watches on a broken man, yet it's soon clear he is prepared for this catastrophe and seemingly pessimistically predicted its outcome, picking out long in advance the tree from which he will hang himself. But Andreev says in death the two sides of his face are like brothers. I think this suggests something of him ultimately finding his peace, that his brother will forgive him in the next life, while at the same time it's made clear that there will be no forgiveness on earth. The actual quote from page 106 is, Good and evil alike shall shower curses on his shameful memory among all peoples, as many as are and ever shall be. In this way and others, Andreev expresses through Judas a disdain for humanity. Their cruelty and fickle stupidity is laid bare through his eyes. Even Jesus' disciples are a petty, squabbling bunch, prone to most of the sins. It's a very dark portrayal of mankind, and almost manages to portray Judas as no more or less than the majority of us. Certainly, by the end, you can't help but feel something for Judas. It's a pretty dark thought. As always, when working with a translation, it's hard to comment on writing style, but as mentioned, this is a traditional text told in the third person. There is little time spent on scene setting, with most of the narrative focused on trying to dissect the thought patterns of Judas, as well as cataloguing his actions. It does occasionally retread the same ground enough to feel a touch repetitive, but it remains a powerful document nonetheless. Some incidents, such as Judas saving Jesus from obeying mob, are recounted after the event when they might have been more powerful if they were shown in full, but these are minor complaints, if indeed they are complaints at all, about what is ultimately a powerful portrayal. If you're interested in religion or Bible studies, but are not hopelessly dogmatic, or are happy to approach this as simply a work of art, then I would recommend it to you. But mostly, this is a strong study of one of the world's most famous betrayals and betrayers. For that alone, it's worthy of your attention. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, there are all sorts of buttons for liking, commenting, and sharing, and subscribing. Feel free to use them as you see fit.